Hey guys and welcome back. So today we're moving on to the next part of the number theory chapter. So this chapter, uh, or this part of the chapter is on modular arithmetic. So what is modular arithmetic? Well, this looks at finding remainders, um, mainly for this topic here in this uh, chapter. Now it has a lot of interesting properties and these are very useful when dealing with large powers. And this is the beauty of modular arithmetic. So this is the kind of thing I answer questions such as, how do we find the remainder of 19 to the power of 273 when divided by 12? So we can answer them questions using modular arithmetic. So you can see here straight away, what it does, it gives us a few images of a clock. And this is sort of just to illustrate the idea of modular arithmetic. One of the key facts that you need to know for modular arithmetic is that the two numbers to what we call congruent that m must divide the difference of a minus b. So you'll see this on the very next slide where we show a couple of examples. So this is a new bit of notation, these three lines. Um, you'll typically have seen this as an identity, but in number theory, this means congruent to. So five modulo two is congruent to one because if you divide five by two, well, it's not gonna be an integer, but you'll have a remainder of one. So that's what that means. If you divide 11 by 3, well, that'd be 3 times 3 would be 9, but we have a remainder of 2 to get us to 11. And then 40 mod 2, well, if you've got an even number, mod 2, it's always going to be 0. So that's just to show that little property there. So if A is congruent to B modulo M, then you write this notation here. So this is just illustrating this point up here. But if it's not congruent to B modulo M, such as here, then we write this notation here. So just be a little, you know, aware of that fact. Uh, just a little bit of notation there. So, verifying congruences. So this is just what we mentioned here, that m must divide the difference of a minus b. So let's illustrate that with a couple of examples. So, for example, 24 is congruent to 9 mod 5. We have to verify whether this is true or false. So they've done it for us. And then what you do is you always take this number on the right-hand side across to the left. So 24 will be minus, so it's going to be 24 minus 9. So that's going to be 15. And then you have to check whether the mod number, so mod n, if n divides the difference. So here, we do 24 minus 9, that's 15. And then we check if this number here, with the mod, 5, divides the difference. So 5 does divide 15, so therefore this congruence here is true. It, it does verify. So the next one, you would do 5 minus minus 11. So be very careful for that. That will give you 16. And then we've got to check whether the mod divides the difference. Does 8 divide 16? Yeah, of course it does. So it's true. And then again, finally, do 4, take away this onto the other side. So 4 minus 17 gives us minus 13. Does 2 divide minus 13? It doesn't. So therefore, this congruence is not true. It's false. So this is just a little bit, again, just telling you, you know, the ideas, um, you know, behind congruence. You don't have to memorize these facts, um, but just using these properties can help you. But that's how we verify whether a congruence holds. So we're going to look at that when we do some exam questions on the next video. So these are some properties of congruence. You don't have to memorize these, um, but it just helps and makes life a lot easier if you know them. So, you know, it's just showing that A is going to be congruent to 0 mod M if and only if M divides A. And to give you an example here, same again, A is always going to be congruent to A mod M, 3 is congruent to 3 mod 5, and, you know, so on. So this is just showing these little ideas. For example, if A is congruent to B mod M, then B is going to be congruent to A mod M. And again, they illustrate this with an example. So you don't need to memorize these, but they will help. They will make life a lot easier if you can just sort of learn these facts. So, question time. What is the remainder of 23 to the power of 753 when divided by 11? Well, the answer is 1, but how do we get there? So this is what modular arithmetic answers. It helps us a lot with large exponents. So. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I got attacked by my cat, so <laughs> I had to restart. But basically, so where we was up to, we were looking at whether, or what the remainder of 23 to the power of 753 is when divided by 11. So the first thing we have to do is rewrite this. So if we're defining by 11, that's the same as taking this mod 11. So this is how we're going to rewrite it. And take this, um, or use this property to help you a lot with these questions. So if we were dividing by 20, this would be mod 20. We're dividing by 3, mod 3. So we've rewritten it. Can we reduce the 23 to make this easier? Well, the first step we always do is look at what 23 is mod 11. So you always look at your bigger number, um, or your base, should I say, and look at what it is mod n. So this is mod 11. So 23 mod 11, well, that's just going to be 1, because it'd be 11, 22. What do we have to get from 23 to 23? It's going to be 1. 
So our question is now actually just 1 to the power of 753, mod 11. But remember anything, so 1 to the power of anything is just going to be 1, which gives us a remainder of 1. So sometimes these questions can be a lot easier than they look using the power of modular arithmetic. So we've got a tricky question here. We have to find the remainder when 1 factorial plus 2 factorial plus 3 plus 4 factorial so on all the way up to 100 factorial is divided by 15. So what this actually is in summation notation is this here. Now it might be a bit harsh to see, um, I know it's not super clear, but this is the summation of n factorial from n is 1 to 100 mod 15. Now, at Excel, uh, don't I expect you to sit there all day calculating 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, all the way up to 100 factorial, and then take a moment for 15. They don't expect that. What they expect is for you to use a bit of intuition to spot a few little facts about this. So, the way I'd always start a question like this, if you can't see it straight away, start by writing down 1 factorial and 2 factorial and taking on mod 15. So, 1 factorial is equal to 1 which is congruent to 1 mod 15. Anything lower than 15 here is just going to be the number itself. So 2 factorial is equal to 2, which is going to be congruent to 2 mod 15. So hopefully you can see where this is going and what this pattern is going to form. So let's keep going. 3 factorial, that's equal to 6, which is congruent to 6 mod 15. And again, let's keep going. So we get 4 factorial, that's 24, which is congruent to 9 mod 15. So we're going to keep going now. 5 factorial is equal to 120, which is equal to 0 mod 15. Well, we've got 0 here. And the reason we get a 0 here for this one is because what we have is 5 factorial. So that's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So notice in there we have a 5 and we have a 3 giving us 15. So because we've got a 15 here and we're taking it mod 15, this is going to be 0. And notice, because this is 5 factorial, well, 6 factorial is 5 factorial times 6. So everything past 5 now is going to also be 0. So what we have now is 1 plus 2 plus 6 plus 9, all the, the mods that we just took um, on the last slide. So we take these mod 15. Well, if we simplify this side first here, that's going to come to 18 mod 15, which is clearly just going to be 3 mod 15. So this gives us a remainder of 3. So that was quite a tricky question. That's um, kind of a very typical sort of question there, and that would usually be about three or four marks. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do this on a new video, um, but I hope that one was okay. So that was just an introduction to modular arithmetic. So on the next question, uh, the next video, what we're going to do is look at questions from exam papers and the very typical style of exam questions. So take it easy, guys, and I hope that was okay.